Hello, good afternoon all. Uh, my name is Sabbath and I work within Hired. Uh, thank you all for attending. And my colleague Yasmin, who's also joined us today, who will be supporting the event. Uh, so thank you very much for everyone who's joined in so far. Hoping to see more of you after. Um, obviously, both of us work within Hired. We work as employee engagement and alumni officers. Um, so we'll be introducing the employers as we go along. So we have around 10 employers uh, for this afternoon. So hopefully, fingers crossed, they'll all still be attending. But we're going to start off with, um, we were hopefully, um, you know, uh, we we're supposed to be joined with with Matt from EES, but unfortunately they haven't attended yet. So I think he's having some difficulties. So Ishrat's already here. So we start off with um, Monarch Education, uh, who'll be talking through, uh, you know, the opportunities that they have available. So I'll pass it on. Ishrat, I made you presenter. And we'll take it from there. Thank you, guys. Thank you very Brilliant. much. Thank you. Hi, everyone. My name is Ishra, and I work as a senior candidate care consultant for Monarch Education. So I've been exactly where you guys are when you're kind of deciding the next steps of your career as soon as you kind of finish university. So if I tell you a little bit about Monarch Education and what we do. So we're an educational recruitment organisation and we kind of work with educational professionals and we place them in work that can be on a day to day basis or like part time alongside university or any life commitments or on a short term, long term or even permanent position we focus on kind of building really good relationships with our schools and our candidates so that we can support kind of our candidates in the next steps of their career as well as really kind of meeting schools needs um, as an organization one of our mottos is putting people at the center of all we do so that we focus on kind of ensuring that we can obviously satisfy everyone's needs whether you're a candidate working with us or a school working with us in terms of who we recruit, so we recruit a range of staff, so that's primary teachers, secondary teachers, teaching assistants, SEND roles, nursery nurses, head teachers, intervention roles, cover supervisors, and we also work with support staff such as lunchtime supervisors and admin and exam invigilators. What I do want to kind of make a note of is that some of these roles obviously do require educational course, so for example like a PGCE or a BA ONS in primary education or related. However, if you have done other courses like health and social care or any other kind of things but have relevant experience where you do want to work with children that is something that we can still definitely take on board and still be able to place you in schools as well as an organization As an organisation, we cover a range of areas in the UK. So we cover Birmingham, Leicester, Coventry, Nottingham, Northampton, Black Country, Bristol, Manchester and Oxfordshire. We have consultants in the offices throughout. So if you're kind of based in Birmingham, we can definitely help you within the areas. If you're from another area, we can definitely help there as well. In terms of the registration process, that's where my role in the company is. So I kind of work with a sourcing hub. So in the sourcing hub, we kind of focus on recruitment of candidates. Now, in terms of regis registering with ourselves, it is pretty straightforward. We'd obviously kind of get you to speak with us and we'd arrange, obviously, an interview over Zoom due to, obviously, the kind of pandemic. Um, so the purpose of the Zoom interview is just to kind of get to know you a little bit more and really figure out what it is that you're looking for. So it might be that you're still currently studying and you're seeking work alongside, or perhaps you're kind of finishing your degree and want to do a bit of supply work before you kind of consider the next steps of your career. In terms of what's required, we'd obviously give you an application pack to complete and relevant references. So they would be pretty straightforward, be able to get something from your university or anywhere that you've kind of worked with, any placements that you've done with children, we'd obviously obtain one from there as well and then we would require you to kind of complete a dbs with ourselves now the, our dbs we actually have something most of the time i'm presuming you guys may have had a dbs done through your university if it's not on the update service we actually offer a facility with ourselves where you know if you do a dbs with us it is reimbursed to yourself once you've done 12 days of work which isn't a lot essentially it's only literally two and a half weeks which we can definitely kind of help you find Perks of working with us. So at Monarch Education, we have dedicated consultants. So I recruit for Birmingham Primary, for example. And in Birmingham Primary, we have consultants allocated different pulse goals in different areas within Birmingham. What that essentially means is that if you drive or you don't drive, you'll be allocated a consultant based on your location so that we can kind of endeavour to kind of find work located near yourselves and kind of schools surrounding your area. So you might be familiar with some of the schools so we can focus on sending you guys out there. Um, 
We also have like a referral friend scheme where you can receive £200 for every referral. And we also offer a lot of training workshops and CPD courses. In fact, recently in um, the current lockdown, we actually offered a lot of like courses, awareness to autism and um, teaching, things like that, just to kind of boost up your skills and offer you that extra certificate on your CV as well. Um, we also kind of get school feedback as well from the schools that we work with. So you can get let you know how you're getting on. And, you know, if you want to kind of progress with that school, they'll let us know what we need that kind of stuff um other than that in terms of monarch education we work really hard with our candidates and we really do kind of listen to what our candidates want um for us when we kind of work with universities what we find is that a lot of students you know want to kind of discover what they want to do before kind of considering postgraduate courses and that's where as a supply organization we can essentially help you guys we offer work around yourself like if you have got commitments for university we can put that on pause for you guys and we just work around yourselves and anything that you may be looking for um is there any questions let me check the um chat is any students got any questions we have one if i was willing to apply for work placement or work around my college course for example part-time Yeah, no, that's completely fine. So obviously we have a lot of students that are kind of are working in university. So part time, it might be that you're only available one, two days a week. So that's fine. What we would do is put you on a day to day supply basis. So we would get you registered with ourselves, get you cleared for work with the DBS references. And then we just find you work on the days that you are available. OK, great. Thank you. Is there any other questions? We have someone typing. How would they register? So in terms of registering, if you look um, on the slideshow, that my email um, is on the very first page. I believe on every slide. So if I just if you just if I go back to one of the slides, so that's my phone number and that's also my contact email. So if you were just to email me CV in or even give me a call, I can have a chat with you or I can refer you to the even if you're not from Birmingham, I can refer you to the relevant person and they can have a chat with you. And um, once we've had that kind of initial chat of what kind of experience you've had, what you're studying at the moment, we can kind of book in an interview and kind of take the process forward from there. Okay, great. Thank you. I can put it in the chat box as well at the end. Robson, I'm not sure what your question is. Do you, would you mind retyping it? Um, we've got another one. Can we only get a DBS check after three years of being in this country? How does the DBS process work for you? So as long as you've obviously got valid right to work in the UK, there's no reason why we can't process your DBS. So even if you do have a passport that's not British, that's not a problem at all, because we can use um, an EU passport as well as relevant address documents. So in processing a DBS, it requires three documents that we use to process. That can be anything from a passport, a birth certificate, a driving license. And if you are from the UK, that's not a problem at all. We can use a European passport alongside a bank statement or a utility bill, which if you have been in the country for three years, you would have that from your current address anyway okay great someone has said um please send me the application form as we've just mentioned if you send um an email that would be the best way for you to get an application form is that correct yeah, so if you if you just literally, I've got one of my slides up. So at the bottom, it's just an email, ishrat.shabon at monarcheducation.com. There's also a number there as well that you can call, which comes through to me. Although we are all working from home, or we've all got work mobiles, and we've all, all got access to emails on a regular basis. So we can definitely kind of access our emails and give you a call back. Or um, even if you drop kind of an email, a voicemail, or even an email with your CV, we can get back to you via that as well. Yeah. I've just put the email address and your number in the chat as well, so they can just copy and paste it that way. Mm -hmm. um, the next question, if I have a DBS from my college, would I, would I have to get one with you? I'd assume that's yes, as you do your own DBS. So it just depends. So if the one that you've done from the college, basically what it is that every DBS offers the opportunity to, to join the update service. The update service is a subscription fee of £13 a year. If you're currently paying that with your college DBS, that means the college DBS is transferable and we can use it as an organisation as well. If it, if it hasn't been placed on the update service, then you would be required to do a new one. But what we do also recommend our candidates to do when they do do one with us as well is to join the update service. So what that essentially means is that should you go on to join any 
any other, if you join um, another university for postgraduate courses or any other agencies or any other kind of organisations that are educational based, the DBS that you do with us won't be singular to ourselves, it will be transferable to other organisations. So it just depends whether you're on the update service for that college DBS. Yeah, and then um, one final question, I think, unless there's any more, what's the opportunity for an international student? So in terms of an international student, it'd be the same as um, a UK student. So it might be that in your home country, you've done kind of work experience or placements with children. If you haven't necessarily done something in the UK, that's not a negative. Uh, we can definitely still help you find it work within the UK if you've done relevant child experience. So what we would do is we'd contact referees that are from your um, home country and we'd be able to get references in that way. For as an organisation, the main thing that we do and we market our students out is be able to reference them and show relevant experience. And that will be through your CV and your placements and your references. OK, great. If there's not any more questions, I'll hand it over to Sabah. Thank you for your time and going through your presentation. It was very informative. Thank, Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for your time. No if worries. Can, no worries. If you can all please say thank you to Ishra obviously for her time um, and obviously a commitment for this afternoon. Uh, we are now joined with Matt from EYEARS. Um, I will upload your presentation, Matt, whenever you're ready. I will upload this one. Okay. Okay, guys, so we got Matt from EYEARS. We've worked very closely with them for many, many years. Um, you know, they have been recruiting a lot of UCB students in the past um and you know they have they have an, offered a lot of opportunities as well so for those of you who are looking to get to the early years he's the guy so i'll just pass it on to matt so whenever you're ready you can unmute yourself and i'm just going to make you presenter okay hi matt i don't think we can hear you have you unmuted yourself I'm ready to present now. Still there now. Hello. Uh, perfect. Yeah, now. There we go. Sorry, I've got my computer muted as well as the uh, as well as the screen. Hi, um, right. hi guys. Um, thanks for sort of being here, um, hanging around today. Um, some of the stuff I'm going to go through might be similar to what you've just heard from Monarch. Some of it might be different. Um, but please throw any questions, ask anything you've got. Uh, I'll do my best to answer it. Um, as Sabbath mentioned, we've worked alongside UCB for a very long time, face-to-face um, -face at careers fairs, dealing with tutors. Um, I've been with the company for 10 years. Uh, we we're about 16 years old, 17 years old now as a company. Uh, but we specialise in early years and we specialise in education recruitment. That, that's all we do. Um, we don't look at things outside of that field. We're very specialist at what we do and we like to think we're, we're pretty good at it. Um, we are preferred suppliers to Birmingham City Council, which means we get a lot of opportunities through them um, within schools, within early year settings, with things like pupil guides, one-to-one uh, -one support. I'll come on to that in a little bit. Uh, we're approved suppliers for the Department for Education as well, um, as well as sort of localised uh, MIT groups and uh, nursery groups. Um, so we do quite a lot. We do quite a wide range of stuff uh, and we're always recruiting. We're always looking for um, for staff to join us to, um, to to look at the roles that we've got, whether they're permanent, whether they're contracted or uh, indeed just sort of ad hoc cover to fit around uni and what you guys are up to at the moment. So I'll work for the presentation again. Sorry if things are kind of repeated from previous things you've heard. Um, as I said, we established in 2005. We're very specialist in what we do. Um, we are spread across the country. We do permanent recruitment for groups right across the country. Um, we do temporary contracted roles and things generally in the locations you can see there on the screen. So um, across the Midlands, as I said, Birmingham, we do Coventry and Warwickshire, Wolverhampton, the Black Country, we do Worcestershire as well. We also spread a bit further afield. We do some stuff in Staffordshire, Shropshire as well. Um, if you are looking for work in any of those areas. Um, we deal with the southwest. We've got Bristol and Somerset office. Uh, Hampshire we cover as well. Uh, up in the northwest, we've got the girls up there that cover sort of Greater Manchester, Liverpool, Cheshire. Uh, and then we've got the East Midlands. So Derby, Nottingham, Luton, Milton Keynes, Bedford. Um, we're looking at Leeds. Uh, we do a bit in Sheffield as well. So we, 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 we're sort of quite spread across the country. 
um, in, in terms of what we can do and where we're at. And as I mentioned, preferred suppliers to the Department for Education, that opens a lot of doors to us. There's a lot of stuff nationwide and locally that, that we sort of do, um, which gives us a really good name. Um, you know, generally have a look on Google reviews and things like that. The clients that we deal with, staff that work with us, students, people who are looking for roles, people who've lost jobs recently because of, of coronavirus, who've come and registered with us. Generally, everyone is, is happy with what we do. Um, I think we're quite reputable. We've got a good reputation in the area. Um, you know, Sabbath wouldn't invite me back onto these talks. I don't think if, if she didn't get good feedback, from the students that we take on from UCB and have done over the years um, and we're a friendly bunch of people we're not a massive multinational corporation there's there's about 20 something of us in the company um, we, we're owned by ourselves we haven't got a big company behind us backing us which means we we can deal with you guys as people as individuals not just as another number not just as a person that works for us we like to think of everyone that works for us as um, as, as a part of us, we like to know a little bit about you in terms of where you want to travel to or family and things going on because it makes it a bit more personal when we're, when we're speaking to you. Um, the roles that we do are really varied. So as I've kind of mentioned before, a lot of the stuff we get through from Birmingham City Council through the, the contract we've got with them is for work within primary schools, within pupil guide routes where you're helping children with additional needs get to and from school on the, on the sort of the minibuses and the taxi routes and things like that. So we've got stuff that will fit around your studies. We've got stuff that will help you out when you uh, have finished your studies. Um, we generally can try and work around yourselves. Um, the roles we recruit for, obviously, teachers, uh, teaching assistants, one-to-one -one support. So that can be uh, within early years settings or within schools. Uh, early years practitioners, so level two or level three qualified staff, or even if you've got um, just a lot of experience and not necessarily got any qualifications, we can help with that as well. Um, we've got temporary work, which is often short term. So it might be for two, three weeks at a time. It might be day to day cover. So you may be here for a couple of days and in another school for a couple of days somewhere else, just supporting staff leave or training. So that's really good to fit around your university studies. Uh, we have fixed term stuff. So we have maternity covers that might be for nine months or 12 months. We have roles in schools where we'll employ somebody for a term. The one to one support cover can often be termly or yearly. Uh, we've had somebody start at a school nursery uh, last week and she's going to be there for the rest of this academic year and probably all of next year as well because they know the child is going to stay there. She's doing a bit of one-to-one -one support. They know the child's going to be there. So that girl's effectively just secured herself work until July 2022. So uh, she's really happy. So there's a lot of different stuff we can deal with. Um, and permanent, we get a lot of permanent vacancies come through, again, through Birmingham Council, through the local contracts that we've got. Uh, we've got nationwide agreements with the likes of Busy Bees and Actions for Children to support their permanent recruitment as well. So there's quite a lot of stuff. So there's, there's bits with us, bits where we can place you into roles directly. Um, as I say, we're here really to work for you. Without you guys coming and joining us at the end of your course or to work around your course, we can't satisfy the demand that we have. And at the moment, that demand is really, really high. Um, the registration process is pretty simple. It was probably quite simple to, or quite similar rather to um, Monarchs before. You'd fill out an application form, which gives us the information that we need for you. Uh, when you work through us, you're paid by us. You are our employee. Um, the way I often sort of refer it to is if you get somebody in to do some work in your house, you get a painter in or a plumber in to repair something, you pay them and you employ them for that period of time that they're, um, they're doing that job for you. It's the same with us. If you come in and you do a nine month contract with us, you are employed by us for those nine months. We pay you. We pay your national insurance contributions. Uh, we pay into a pension for you. You get the full benefits of a PAYE employee, which is what it is. Some agencies do it where you're paid through umbrella companies or a third party where there might be associated costs and things like that. We don't do that. We don't charge a penny for you to join us. We don't take anything out of your pay. Uh, unless we legally have to, things like national insurance or um, things like I said, like pension and things like that, we have to take from you. Um, we don't take anything else off you. There's no cost to join us. Um, it takes about 10 or 15 minutes to complete our application form online. It takes about 20 minutes to half an hour to have a video registration call with one of us, which we have to do. Uh, we do that through any online 
video message. We can do it through uh, Skype, through Teams, um, FaceTime, WhatsApp Messenger, whatever. We can do it straight through that. Uh, you'd send your documents in to us. We'd verify those. Um, the only thing you might need to pay for is a new DBS. If you're not on the update service, then you would need to pay for a new DBS with us. That's just part of the contract we've got with with the government and part of the accreditations we've got. It's the only thing you might need to pay for. Um, and then as soon as we've got everything back and you're all cleared and you've gone through our compliance, we can get you work literally the next day. Uh, we cleared somebody yesterday afternoon. They're out working today. I've cleared somebody about two hours ago. They're out working tomorrow. That's literally how quickly we can get you into roles at the moment. Uh, and it's only going to get busier between now and the end of the academic year. The summer holidays will go a bit quieter and then September will be really, really busy again with roles. So for those of you that are kind of coming towards the end of courses, literally, if you're looking to something permanent from September, that's something we can deal with uh, really quite quickly. Um, but the application process is really, really straightforward. We try and streamline it as much as we can. You don't have to go into the office in person. It's all done via video links um, or over the phone, really. Uh, once you're cleared for work, we've got our E-Years app, which you use to do things like telling us when you're available for work, to see where you're booked in for, to sign your timesheets off, to tell us what you've done. Um, so everything is streamlined, really, to make things as easy as it is for yourselves and for us. Uh, and the process is, is as I say, we, we can get people interviewed on one day and cleared for work the next if you're on the update service. So long as people like your tutors, um and your placements who you put down as references will um will do those references quickly for us that's the only thing that will generally slow a process down uh, not just with us but with any company you register with any job you go for the thing that generally slows things down is references so one thing i'd say to you guys is get your references lined up if you know people you want whether it's going to be a college tutor placement a character reference off someone you know just make sure they turn those references down really quickly because that's probably the thing that will delay delay things sort of moving uh pretty quickly um what are the typical working hours so you work exactly what you want or up to what you want if you're still going to be in uni for two or three days a week then you can work on the other two days you advise us and update us weekly um you can see sort of a screenshot of the app there and that kind of is is um how easy it is to use you can update your availability through there you simply tick the boxes to tell us which days you're free so if you have a lecture in the morning eight till 11 and you want work in the afternoon you can just tell us you're free in the afternoon if you've got lectures all day and you're not free market is unavailable if you don't want to work on monday that's fine put yourself free as tuesday to friday you can literally change that week on week and that's what we use to find the work for you it's using those availability using those it shows as, as green to us the days that you're free that's what we do you can change that regularly you can access it 24 7 to update things um and again the apps the app's completely free you just download it when you're cleared for work with us please don't all go downloading it now because you won't be able to access it uh, but when you're working for us it's there it's 24 7. you can check where you booked in to update your availability request wage slips through it uh, it's really really useful tool to have um pay is weekly you get paid every friday with us so everyone who worked last week will get paid this friday everyone working this week will get paid next friday so it's just rolling on a weekly basis um which is better for when the money comes in that you uh you obviously want to want to kind of spend um Questions wise, there's three of us that generally cover early years within the office here. There's obviously myself, I tend to cover more of the Black Country, Wolverhampton, Warsaw. Zara, uh, Zara's been with us about five years. She covers um, South Birmingham and Worcestershire, so everything from the city centre downwards. Uh, and then Sarah covers North Birmingham, does Coventry and Warwickshire. We've got Hannah and Scott that do our education side as well. But you can give us a ring on that number and we'll chat through anything with you. Um, there's probably lots of questions that you guys have um, around how does it work around studies? What kind of work can we offer? What experiences do you need? As long as we're able to reference you as part of the process with uh, a reference from a childcare or a school placement, whether that's voluntary, whether it is placement through uni, whether it's some work that you're doing on the side directly anyway. Um, then that's absolutely fine. We can we can use that um, as long as we can do that. If it's sort of five, six years ago, a little bit of an issue maybe, but generally as long as you are recently or have recently worked within an early years or a school setting, then we can use that reference. Uh, as Debbie's put there, please make sure you ask referees their permission. Don't just go 
blasting numbers down there. Um, we don't want to annoy anyone. You don't want to annoy anyone. So, yeah, please just put down, um, you know, once you've spoken to them, make sure they're happy, make sure that they're, they're willing to do the reference as well. Um, the roles that we have, some require people to have level two or level three childcare or TA. We have some roles that just require people to have experience, kind of answering your question, AXA. Um, there is a variety of different stuff that we've got. As I say, if you've got experience and recent experience within the last 18 months, two years within a childcare or an early year setting, um, we can certainly look at helping. So even if you've sort of got GCSEs or A-levels, but not in early years, you've got experience working with that or experience working on a one-to-one -one basis you might be great to work with our pupil guide stuff or some of the one-to-one -one. if you've got your level two or three childcare or ta we can get you straight in or degree we can get you straight into roles with that as well so there's quite a lot there's there's always a reason for people to speak to us or ask the question or drop us an email or get in touch with us on our web chat and just say this is where i'm at this is what i've got you know would you be able to help me that's absolutely fine. We'd rather speak to you than not. Uh, we'd rather answer questions than than people just sort of um, think and sit there going, would they register me? Would they not? Would they have work in this area? Would they not? Um, even if you're living in Birmingham now, but you're moving back to Liverpool or Bristol in September, that's fine. We can get you registered now and move you over to the other offices when you've when you've moved yourself. So it's always worth a chat with us. That's probably what I'd say. Thank you, Matt. That was okay. Thank you very much for your time. Okay. Any questions, guys, in the public chat? Uh, would you like to please ask any questions for Matt in regards to maybe what they're offering, how you can get involved, maybe how to register or anything like that? Obviously, the email addresses are on there. You can obviously uh, take a screenshot or you can yep. um, write it down. That's not a problem. Um, but we did have like um, a quick comment by one of the students, Matt, just saying that's great. It could it could be so basically i'm assuming the work that you offer could fit around college course even yeah. if, um, you know if they have like gcse grades etc so i'm assuming they get to choose a shift is that correct yeah to choose the shift yeah if i just go back to the one of the previous slides there so with the uh, the app on the right hand side you can obviously see a very small a small grab of it where it says update availability you can literally pick and choose um what you want to work on certain days so uh, it effectively says am pm or full day um you're free for the full day you tick it you're free for the afternoon or the morning you tick it we'd call you um the pupil guide stuff we do is ideal around college days because it's generally sort of 7 30 till um till nine in the morning where you'll be be doing the pupil guide and getting the students to school um so if you've got college maybe you know 10 till 2 or lectures between 10 and 3 that sort of stuff can work so we've got a lot of people that are at college or at university who work for us because it does it, it fits in well around um around the I suppose the needs, the the, the, the the lectures at the moment, whether they're virtual or actually in person, yeah, the, the, the work we can offer is flexible. Great, thank you so much. And you know what? That is actually really good and really helpful for our students as well. Yep. Um, especially any of you guys who are looking to get into this field or, you know, this area, do check that app out or, you know, how it works. Um, register with them. Um, and of course, you know, once everything's in the clear, um, then hopefully they can start working. Yeah, ideally that's that's where it's at. I mean, we've got um, the website, obviously eyears.co.uk, Facebook pages, get in touch with us, drop us a message on there if you want. Uh, or if you do go on the website, there is a web chat that will pop up at the bottom corner. Just drop us okay. a message on there uh, or call us. That might be easier than trying to scribble down email addresses. Either drop the office a call, we're open seven in the morning till six at night, uh, or the web chat's active from, from sort of eight in the morning till about five, half five. Great stuff. Thank you so much, Matt, for your time. There's no, no other worries questions. at all. Uh, and hopefully, yeah, I'll get to speak to you again tomorrow uh, for the uh, other yeah. session. Yep. Uh, so thank you so much for your time and thank you for joining. No thank worries. You. Thanks, Sabbath. Bye. No worries. Can everyone else please also thank Matt uh, for his time uh, and of course for the brilliant presentation. Um, yep. So thank you very much. We will move on to the next one. So I'll pass it over to my colleague, Yasmin. Thanks, Sabah. Can we just introduce Sapna and Danny now from NQT Partnerships? Are your microphones working? We're just uploading your presentation. Hi, yes. Can you hear us? Yeah, I can hear you. Sabah will be uploading your presentation and then we'll do the questions at the end. Thank <laughs> you. 
Why is that for nature? Are you able to? Yeah, I can. Yeah, I've got the slide here in front of me. Thanks for that. Hi, everyone. Thanks for taking the time out to um, listen in today. Um, I'm Sapna from the NQT Partnership and the International Partnership. So just to go through a little bit about ourselves, um, we are part of a large corpor corporation, actually. Um, as you can see there, we're part of the classroom partnership. So Danny and I, um, we work with um, the NQT partnership and the international teaching partnership as well. But you can see the other uh, recruitment agencies that we're part of as well. Um, so just to go through a bit more in detail about the partnership, uh, the classroom partnership. So as a whole, um, we are basically a boutique education brand that worked together since 1999, actually, so quite a long time. And Danny and I have been in recruitment for, gosh, I think over eight years now, Danny. Danny, have you been the um, same? About 15 years. Yeah, so we, we pretty much have been in education for such a long time. Um, Danny actually works with primary. I do deal with secondary as well. So if you are looking for that avenue where we're probably the best that we can help you out with work across the UK and London. Um, but we also have Connects Education as well, which is basically your day to day supply cover. So your temporary cover. So if you're not looking into that permanent um avenue where you're looking at teaching straight away um you know we've got that temporary avenue with connects education where you can dip and dab inside of supply as well so um that's a bit about connects um with the nqt partnership this is purely um permanent recruitment so danny and i work with london and across the uk and we basically look after nqt teachers so we don't look after you know your experienced teachers or anything like that it's just nqt teachers who are looking for you know the next step in their career so whether it's you know wanting to get your induction done straight away that's something that we can definitely help you with so um, what we do, and you'll see on our website as well, um, we have a portal that can offer you a variety of different things. So we've got a vacancy shortlist, we've got interview and lesson observation advice. Danny does a lot with kind of um, helping and prepping you with interviews um, and also giving you feedback as well, you know, just anything to help you find you that perfect role and that school um, to kickstart your career. Um, we've also got on there kind of NQT mentors. We've got CPD training, which we're quite lucky to have the Thirsty Scholarship Programme, um, who are our sister company who provide all of this. So not only you can have training on, you know, safeguarding, or whether it's EAL, SEN training, um, you know, we're there every step of the way. Um, but yeah, you've got a dedicated consultant, which is myself or Danny, to help you get that kind of first step and get you onto your induction so that's completed straight away. Um, but all the details are there, so you can join our NQT pool. Um, the website is there as well. Um, the International Teaching Partnership is basically working abroad and not a lot of teachers know about this, but um, whether you're primary or secondary, you can work abroad once you qualify. And if you are looking to get your induction year done straight away, that's something that can be done abroad as well. But if you're still looking for somewhere to gain experience, whether it's in Europe, Southeast Asia, Middle East or East Asia, um, you can do this in a school. So. It's a great opportunity um, if you love traveling, if you want to kind of start that straight away and then potentially, you know, we've got teachers who come back to the UK to, you know, do their induction year then. It's a great stepping stone. So, you know, we've got a variety of schools all over the world who are screaming out for UK teachers, you know, whether it's from foundation stage to secondary, um, you know, they would be very, very much interested. And the process is very much similar to 
I guess other schools as well and what we're doing during lockdown so you have initial interview by Skype or Zoom with the school and then a second interview as well if all goes well with the principal or head of department um, and yeah it's pretty much straightforward where you know you get an offer where it includes packages like accommodation you get um, flights included you get an allowance sometimes every single month or bonuses so it's it's a great opportunity for a lot of teachers which is why they go abroad um to try it out even just for a year so that's something that we cover um and yeah you can basically go onto our website and see all the vacancies on there um and have a look at what we've got to offer and um lastly you can register with us so you can go onto our website for like i said with cpd hints tips um we keep you up to date with anything that's upcoming with our safeguarding which we offer free of charge when you register with us um so you've got our websites there where you can actually register um but also if you are on social media so instagram twitter facebook we're all on them platforms as well and we're very active on there when we post you know things about our job vacancies our cpd courses um anything to just help you guys kickstart your career and you know take that next step where Danny and I are here to obviously offer that advice as well. Does anyone have any questions at all? Thank you, Sarah. Um, I'm just looking at the public chat. We don't have any questions right now, but would you be able to let me know if there are any placements or work experience students can do? Um, I don't think on secondary we tend to have them. Danny, I don't know if um, she has them on primary, um, but in terms of work experience, it can be quite limited because we only deal with permanent um, permanent work. Um, however, that's something, an avenue that we can potentially look at and it definitely with our sister company, Connects Education, where you can definitely contact them and ask for that volunteering experience for sure. Okay, that's fine. Oh, Sorry, we've got the students register on the web address on the page right now. Um, yeah. Would you be able to just go? Is it a quick process for them just to sign up or? Yeah, it's a really quick process. So um, all we ask for is for the, everyone to put just put their name, telephone number, and upload their up to date CV. Um, once you've done that, what we actually do is we contact you straight away and we send you a link. So that link will send you straight to our website um, and our portal. And that once you put on your details there in terms of a bit more details, actually, in terms of your location where you're looking for, um, the nitty gritty of kind of your placements, the year groups that you're looking for. Once you've done that and you're onto our portal, you have like a whole access to all our CPD courses, etc. And then that's when we give you a call and just have an informal chat um, and just get to know you a bit more and for you to ask us any more questions as well. Okay, and great. Just, just, just to add, obviously, Sapna mentioned there that they need to send their CV. A lot of students haven't kind of got to that point yet. So there is a um, a form they can fill out which will um, give us the details we need to assist them to write the CV so if they haven't got a CV that's absolutely fine they can go on and we'll send them an online form um, and that's another way of registering as well which is really nice and quick and easy. Okay that's great and they would be able to have a preference of middens on the yep. that they fill in? Or absolutely we work with schools right across the UK and as Satna says we also work closely with our sister company Connex they've got a branch in Birmingham um, and we have branches right across the UK obviously where we specialize solely in NQT recruitment um, we look at all the permanent positions but we have got obviously other branches that can help them but yeah we absolutely work with NQTs right across the UK and internationally as Satna said so any location if people are looking to stay put or relocate we can definitely help and if there was a place that they wanted to be, they'd be able to make that preference as well? Yes. Okay, great. Um, is there any other questions by students? Um, just give it a few minutes just to see if anyone would like to type. But if not, thank you for your presentation. Um, it will be shared with students after the conference that I have access to information. Um, would it be okay with you if you put your contact details in the chat box just in case students want to get in touch with you directly or would you prefer it on the website? No, that's absolutely yeah. fine. We'll just do that. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, we're happy to give them details. Okay, great. Thank you. Thank you.
Okay, now um, we will have our next presentation by Xanta Healthcare, and that will be Martha, which will be starting in a few minutes' time. Martha, is your microphone working? Hello? Hello, yes, we can hear you. It's a little bit quiet, though. How is it? Can you hear me now? We can hear you, but would you be able to put the volume a little bit higher? Can you hear me now? Yeah, that sounds better. I'll hand it over to you. All right, thank you. Are you ready? Yeah, yeah, Martha, whenever you're ready, you can just start. Okay. Um... Hi everybody, my name is Martha and my surname is Manera. I'm from Zanta Healthcare. We're a care company that's based within the West Midlands. We're based in Dudley and we're also based, we're also based in Birmingham. We provide domiciliary care and we also provide supported living. So I'm the founder member of this company. It's founded in 2015. But we've, over time, we've grown. We've got a team of over 35 people work for ourselves, and we've got over 60 clients. So that's basically who we are, really. So our registration details are as follows, and we work with a number of local authorities. So we work with Dudley City Council, we work with Birmingham City Council, we work with Staffordshire, and we work with various CCGs. Those are clinical commissioning groups, part of the NHS. Our registered office is in Dudley. So depending on what area you're working, whether you're in Staffordshire or Birmingham or Dudley, you still come to register at this place and then you, you basically go to to your various bases. We do tend to to intermingle every now and then, but just depending on training or but staff mainly stick to the bases of where they work. So we provide various sorts of cares depending on the individual's needs. So we provide personal care. So personal care can involve washing and dressing. It can involve um, companionship support, shopping calls, medication calls, or basic sittings whilst the care of the person goes out to for shopping or just to have some, some time alone. And our carers will just support them. So these are some of our... Uh, our clients and our carers and our basically just shows our uniform and the various types of care that we do. We also provide a cleaning service. As you know, most of our clients are not able to clean their own homes. So this is part of something that we also do. We have supported living properties. So this is one of our properties that's in, based in Erdington in Birmingham. And we we have residents who live there and we basically provide care for them within that home. Some of them actually have jobs and they go out and go to work with the support of our carers and they come back home and live life as normal as possible. So we have a number of, of jobs that are currently available. So we, we, we need quite a number of volunteers who come in or help organize games and any gardening or florist projects. We, we're always looking for carers and care coordinators, senior carers, because we are a growing enterprise and we're, we're constantly recruiting more staff and recruiting more clients. So it's, those are the jobs that are constantly are available. So we also have some apprenticeship opportunities to work on projects such as developing our social media, developing our website, and just mainly in our marketing session in section, that's where we have quite a few vacancies that 
would be suitable for any apprentices that would like to come on board. We're very keen on having people who who are innovative and people who bring in fresh ideas into the organization and are able to help our team to develop in different direction as opposed to somebody coming and continuing what we're doing. So we want somebody who's quite open-minded and willing to develop the organization. So we've, from the time we started our, our, our company, we have been rated good on every inspection and we have been consistently good. So we pride ourselves in a lot of quality and in, in the things that we do. So we, we're really particular about people who come in to, to add value to our service users care. We were also featured, so we've been one of the organizations that have been chosen based obviously on our ratings to go into parliament and we had an award for that. You can go into there and see the reviews regarding the parliamentary review. So we are current members who do feedback into to changing of care policies and also influencing care policies. So these are our details. Should be you be interested in joining our fast growing team, you can always contact the following numbers. Our admin team will be really happy to help and will give you further information if required. Are there any questions you'd like to ask me? Hi, Martha. Thank you for that. Does anyone have any questions that they'd like to ask? There are a couple typing and then we'll just go through them. Okay, thank you. Would you be able to explain what you mean by your question, Abhin Tika? Sorry, are you asking me that? You didn't have the question, but I'm unsure what they mean. Would you be able to rewrite it, please? I'm unsure what you're asking. While we're waiting for the questions, do you do any placements for students? Yes, so you know the ones I said about the apprenticeships. So those are the placements for the students. So the area we're looking for apprenticeships at the moment is marketing, development of social media. So it's mainly within that area, that's where we're looking at. So we do have students who already work for us. You know, people are in placement, but they also cover like care jobs as a permanent sort of work arrangement so they're on our bank system so those are the areas that your students could join in if they were interested okay, great that explains it better we have another student typing um, when they do register online um do they have to upload a cv what's what's the process so the they register their CV and then we we have a look at it and then obviously we'll then give them the application form if, if they meet the criteria. Okay, great. Um, the student's still typing, waiting to see what their question is. May I ask if you accept any volunteers to join and help you when they have spare time in any kind of Yes, we do. The students, though, they have to be over the age of 18 in order for them to work within our environment. It's a, a stipulation and they do need to have to have been DBS checked. With at least two references for them to be able to do any, whether it's a voluntary or a paid, paid employment. Can you provide the DBS or do they have to do that themselves? They have to do that themselves. Would you be able to signpost them to where they could get a DBS done from? So, uh, yes, we, we have a link, our own link, where they we can provide them with the link and then they can go through, straight through to the DBS service and they can complete the application on their own and then we will do the paperwork check for them. The link, the application is 
we do provide them with the link, but it's an independent application with the DBS serv service just through ourselves. And is it free for the student to register? Yes, it is. Thank you. Are the students still typing? Um, oh, okay. No, that's fine. Very much. Would you be able to put in your contact details into the chat box so students, if you're okay with that, they can get in contact with you if they have any questions that they may not want to ask in the chat? If that's okay. Just put, will the phone number just be okay then instead of? Do you, do you have an email just in case that may be an easier way for students to get in contact with you? Thank you, Martha, for your time. And the presentation will be made available to students. And if they have any questions, um, the direct dial is in the chat box if any students would like to give Martha a call. I'll pass it over to Sabath now to introduce the next employer. Okay. Thank you, Yasmin, and thank you, Martha. Just going to pass it on now. We are joined with Bali from Nursery Styles today. Uh, again, we have recently uh, started working with them quite closely. So, Bali, I've just uploaded your presentation and I will make you presenter. There you are. All set. Hi, can everyone hear me? Hello? Yeah, we can. It's just a bit quiet. Oh, sorry. Is this better? No, would you be able to increase the volume just a little bit? Yep. Is that better enough, everyone? We can hear yep. you. It's just a bit quiet from my end. If you could put your, um, if you could speak more near the mic, that should, um, that should be okay, Bali. But everyone else can hear you now. Yeah, thank you. That's not a problem. So welcome everyone. Um, I work for Nursery Stars and we're here um, and we'll be recruiting quite um, a few students. So if anyone's on any childcare based courses, you can feel free to apply. Um, my details get the end of, end of the slide. So if you've got any questions, just pop them in the chat and I'll have a read through them. But we're actually um, a social networking career developing platform that we're creating. So we're launching an app um, over the next few days. We're going to have an app that's launching. And on there, you'll be able to access any new job. So it's like an Indeed and a LinkedIn, but for the education sector for early years. So definitely if you're on any childcare based course, it might be ideal to be on the app. So you can be in contact with other nurseries. Um, on there, we will also be posting any offset, um, offset guidelines, any new changes to policies. Um, yep. So what we're looking for, we're looking for passionate individuals that have a have a knowledge of the EYFS that are based in the Birmingham area and that will be able to travel to local nurseries. We do have nurseries that do have some quite high standards, so we will be going through an interview process with all candidates that do apply. Um, I did see for the previous um, presentation that some of you were asking about a DBS. We do provide DBS, so we will be paying for all your DBS checks, and you are required to be on the update service, which is just a form that you will need to fill out online, and you will be on the update service, but we do initially pay for that to be done for you. Um, we do um, we do help with building up your profile. So on the app, you can add your references in, for example. Um, so other nurseries, they'll be able to see who you are and then they can um, track you down. So basically they can send you a message and say, um, can you work for us? Or we've got these jobs available because you're, um, sorry, lost my trailer thought, but all your education will be on there as well. So it will say whether you're a level three, level four, if you're still in the middle of a degree, everything will be on the app. So on there, you can also select if you want to work for a job and you can contact different managers. But on, also on the app, what we will have is, it's like an agency base. So if a, a nursery, for example, needs a shift covering on a Monday, they will contact you like, are you available to work this shift on the Monday for me? 
and you can add your um, availability on there. So if you're only available on a Friday afternoon, that's perfectly fine. If you add it on there, then the nurseries can then see this practitioner is only available on Friday afternoon. So if I do need maybe a one till six shift covering, I can select that practitioner and it's a bit more flexible. So if one week you're going to be away because or if you've got any deadlines and you don't want to work that one week, you don't have to select any availability. And that way, nurseries will know that you're not available. But if you've created that bond with a particular nursery, for example, they will always look at your availability first before they go to a different practitioner. So it might be important to build those relationships with nurseries, especially if you want to stay within that sector. Um, and if they do have any jobs that come available, you'd probably be the first that they'd come to because they already know how you work. You have an idea of how their nursery works. You've been in contact with the children and the staff. So you have that communication with them. Yeah. So what we are looking for is the minimum of level two qualification. So like I said, you need to be passionate, motivated and be willing to work with children age zero to five. Um, we do want someone, like I said, with an understanding of the EYFS, just because it does help when you are supporting children within the nursery. If you've got other experiences like SCM, for example, that could be beneficial for you. Yep. But if you do feel you could, can be part of Nursery Stars and you can support these nurseries, feel free to drop me an email. Um, I'll just pop my... So that's my email address. If you just drop me an email with your CV in and show your interest, I can always arrange for a quick phone interview and then we could probably go ahead with that from there. Does anybody have any questions? Thank you, Bali. Thank you for that. Um, we've got a student typing up in the public chat, so hopefully they'll have a few questions. But um, did you want to also go through, you know, um, we've been discussing via email in regards to the other opportunities you have with Kickstart. Did you want to briefly go through that as well? Yeah, of course. So if any of you are, avail um, are aware of the Kickstart scheme that the government are currently running, the criteria is online if you want to have a look. But if you are interested, it's a six month paid placement within nurseries. So if you're in hospitality, it could be an assistant chef you might become or an assistant finance um, or an accountant. Um, we do have these opportunities and it is, um, sorry, you do have an assistant um, practitioner role as well. And that is a six month paid placement and you do 25 hours a week. You would need to see if that fits in with your university and college timetable, because if you're at college full time, for example, you might not be able to take out 25 hours a week for work but it would be 25 hours min paid at minimum wage and we would help with career um cv building and um, workshops we would give you interview techniques we would give you all the training so with the early years for example we were in touch with ndna and they provide um early years training so safeguarding food and hygiene um, FGM, they give you all the training and we would be working with you closely to give you all the training so you create this portfolio so when you do go to a, an interview at another nursery for example you could show them their portfolio and say I've got a DBS, I've got all these um, certificates, I've got all these trainings behind me and it makes you easily employable but if you are interested in that route and want more information again just drop me an email and I'm pretty quick in my emails so Feel free to contact me. I think someone just said, don't you provide? We do provide volunteer opportunities. However, if you do have a, a minimum level two, only then you would be able to volunteer through nursery stars. Otherwise, it would have to be direct through the nurseries. Yeah. Great stuff. That's fine. Thank you so much, Bali. Is there any of the further questions, guys, before Bali heads off? If not, can I all please say thank you to Bali for her time. Uh, thank you once again, Bali, uh, for an insightful presentation. Uh, and of course, if there are any further questions, I'm sure the students would ask directly um, via your email address. But yeah, uh, feel free to keep communicating with us. I'm more than happy to help as well. So thank you very much. Moving Perfect. on. Thank no worries. Thank you very much, Bali. Moving on to our next presentation is by Sam, uh, our very own um, colleague who works within UCB. 
uh, within the marketing team. Uh, Sam, I'm going to make you presenter if you want you to upload your presentation um, whenever you're ready. So yeah, Sam is joined by us, um, by the marketing team. She will go through the opportunities that are available in terms of um, uh, courses wise and anything else within UCB, okay? So I'm just passing over to Sam and Sam will just upload a presentation and we'll take it from there. Thank you. Brilliant. So thanks for that introduction, Sabbath. Um, so yeah, so my name's Sam and I'm the Senior Schools Liaison Officer here at UCB. So normally I would be going out to different colleges, different schools and talking about the opportunities we have available here and the range of different courses that we offer. So today I'm just going to give you a bit more information um, depending on whether you're studying at college here or whether you're at university, kind of looking at those next steps and what courses are available here for you. So obviously we've got our two schools and within that it's broken down into different departments. So today I'm just going to concentrate on our education department, social care and health. So we can just have a look at um, a bit more detail in terms of what university courses we offer and then also what postgraduate courses we offer as well. Oh, hi George. Nice to see you. Nice to see if we can put hello in the chat box. It's nice to know I'm talking to people. <laughs> Brill, so starting off, we're going to have a look at um, the Department for Education. And so on the screen, you can see the undergraduate courses that we offer. So we have, and these might be some of the courses that you guys are studying at the moment. So we have our Early Childhood Studies degree. We have our brand new primary education studies degree, which is starting in September, and that's actually an accelerated degree. And what that means is, is that it takes two years to complete the degree rather than three. The fees are slightly higher, so they're just over 11,000 per year. But obviously, that's still cheaper than doing a three year course. That also does mean that if you are looking to go into um, onto our PGC and work as a primary school teacher, then it is a kind of a quicker pathway for you because you do two years at undergraduate and then you do your year at postgraduate as well. And then we do have our childhood education studies and that's an online course. So we do now offer that across um, the full degree level as well. So that would be level four or five and then you can do the top up as well and that's level six and that's all online. You still get support from tutors and kind of help with your assignments as well. It's just a bit more flexible in terms of the way that it's taught. And then kind of having a look at the postgraduate courses that we offer. So these are the two postgraduate courses we'll be speaking about today. Um, so we have the brand new educational leadership qualification and that's starting this September. So that master's programme is more for people that are looking to kind of get those higher level jobs within schools. So whether you want to be on the senior curriculum teams, um, whether it's kind of you're looking to be deputy head teacher, head teacher, those kind of areas. Um, and I think it was a statistic from the Department of Education that said that more people and um, more head teachers actually do have a master's level qualification now. Um, so that's kind of the main reason why you would study that course and help build those skills and that knowledge um, if you are looking to kind of progress to those areas within schools. So. I'll talk a bit more about the funding side of the postgraduate course a bit later on. Um, but the main kind of key facts about the course is that it's one year full time or it would be two years part time. It would be through the postgraduate um, loan. And as I said, I'll talk about that a bit later on. Um, it's £8,000 
for that course as well um and yeah that's the main kind of thing and it's kind of the master's program that you'd be looking at we do offer the pg dip um but that won't be covered within the student finance as well so that's worth noting about that course we then do offer the pgc for primary education so unfortunately we don't offer it for secondary education it is just primary education again that would take a year and it's also worth having a look at the entry requirements for that course you do need your maths english and your science qualifications at gcse um, to gain access onto that course and um, so it's definitely worth having a look on the website i can pop the link to that course on the website so you can find out more information about the entry requirements but it is worth looking at that that you do need your maths and english and science gcse's for that one again so that's a year and the course fees for this course is 9250 the reason for that is it comes underneath the undergraduate student finance fees um, so it would just the kind of the money that you owe for your undergraduate course it gets added into that pot and then that's when you start paying it back once you earn over that 20 i think it's now 26 27000 pounds um per year so it's added into that loan system not the postgraduate and that's why you then pay the fees as if it was a postgraduate year study then kind of having a look at the other departments and kind of what we offer undergraduate level so we have our health and social care course and then we also have within our health department we have our adult nursing course and then we also have our physiotherapy course um, those two courses started last September so we've got our first lot of students going through there and some of you might be already on those courses as well at the moment we don't currently offer any masters or postgrad qualifications for either of those departments potentially it might be something we look into in the future but there's no plans at the moment um, to add any postgraduate courses along these lines um, so for the courses that you're potentially looking at it would be the education postgraduate courses that might be of interest to you And then looking at student finance, um, for the undergraduate courses, we do have this booklet here, um, and I can pop a link into the chat box for you. Um, and that tells you all about the funding for undergraduate and PGC students as well. And um, looking at kind of how you apply, and then you've also got kind of the repayment information as well. Um, so if you are looking to study at um, undergrad, this will cover the student finance areas. And then also if you're looking to stay with us to do your PGCE, um, then you would have a look in this booklet as well and it'll tell you all about how would you um, fund that year of training as well. For the education leadership, um, so this would be a separate loan. So it's still through student finance, but it's a postgraduate loan instead. So English students studying a full master's degree are eligible for this loan. So that's what I was saying here that you would need to look to do the master's, not the postgraduate diploma, because you wouldn't be eligible then for the postgraduate loan. And then, as I said before, the PGCE, it comes under the undergraduate loan system, not postgraduate. We do also offer some fee waivers um, for current ECB students. So if you do achieve a first class honours degree um, and then you start a postgraduate qualification straight after, you can receive a discount of £1,200 on your tuition fees. You don't need to apply, that discount is automatically added for you. We then do offer that if you don't um, quite get the first class honours, um, if you are a progressing UCB student, then you can still get a discount of £600. We then do offer a fee waiver on the PGC course fees as well. Um, and as you can see, um, if you're a home or EU student and you're looking to progress straight after your undergraduate study, you can receive a fee waiver of £1,200 off your PGC as well. And again, there's no application needed. That would just be automatically discounted for you. So if you do want to find out more information about any of the courses that I spoke about today, we do have two open days coming up. So they're both taking place online. So the first one for our university courses is Saturday, the 27th of March. That's next Saturday. And that's 11 a.m. till 3 p.m. 
And then we do have a postgraduate one as well. Um, and that's Wednesday, the 21st of April, and that's 6 p.m. till 7.30 p.m. as well. If you are interested in our postgraduate courses, there are other ways that you can find out more information about the courses. So this is our brand new postgrad prospectus. So you can download that from the website and have a look through there. It's a nice shiny new purple, which we um, all really like the look of. <laughs> We've had the gold and white for some time, so it's nice to kind of have a bit of a refresh. And then you can also find out more that we offer a postgraduate chat. So on the relevant course pages on the website, you'll notice that there's a banner saying that if you want further information, you can actually speak to the course lecturers on the postgraduate courses. So you just fill out a quick form and then it will take you through to their calendar. Um, and so you literally book in a time on their calendar that you want to speak to them um, and then they will give you a call so you can have a chat about the course as well. And then we do have our Unibuddy students, so current postgraduate students are available um, on our Unibuddy platform on the website. So you can speak to them about what it's like studying postgrad and any questions that you might have, they'll be able to answer for you. And yeah, and if you want to get in contact with us, so any of the school liaison team, we do have a chat button on the website and that's available Monday to Friday, nine till five. You can see the link there and I can pop that into the chat box as well. Um, so yeah, it's just a chat function so you can ask us any questions you might have. There's also our email address if you prefer to email and then we've also got the direct number as well if you want to give us a call. But yeah, thank you for listening. And if you've got any questions, please feel free to pop them in the chat box. I'm happy to answer um, any of those. And I'll just quickly put some of the links in for you as well. Thanks, Sam. That is great. Thank you for your presentation. Um, if anyone has any questions, please do put them in the chat box. And if you want to contact Sam directly, would you be able to put your email in there as well? Yeah, of course. They may have. Um, our next presentation will be with Grace from Fairway Home Care, and then we'll be joined by Kaya from CGR and Megan from the Department of Education. So if you just give us a couple of minutes, we will introduce Grace. Grace, we can start whenever you're ready. Um, you are now unmuted. Hello, um, my mic, uh, my, not my microphone, sorry, my camera for some reason is not turning on. So um, I do apologise, I won't be able to turn it on um, if that's okay. Yeah, that's okay, don't worry. Yeah, that's okay, don't worry. Okay, lovely. So, um, hello everyone. Um, my name's Grace. I'm from Fairway Home Care. I am the recruitment manager for Fairway Home Care. I have also got on with me today um, my colleague Lee. Lee is um, also going to be talking today. He is the registered manager for um, Fairway Home Care. So we're kind of just going to, I'm going to do a bit of information to you guys first, then I'm going to pass you on to Lee and talk a little bit more about that sort of um, what he can offer and things like that and then um yes but we're gonna first go through the presentation so first um just want to kind of say who we are and kind of what we do so um fairway home care we are based in Sutton Coalfield however we're a care provider um based across the whole of the West Midlands so we supply to various different settings across the whole of the West Midlands so it'd be very local to everybody it's not just in one um area um, we supply to residential homes, nursing homes, support settings such as mental health, learning disabilities, eating disorders, um, challenging behaviour. And we also have a community care side of the business as well, which is registered by with CQC. 
So this is caring for individuals on a one-to-one -one basis in their own homes. Um, though that is based kind of in Sutton Coalfield area and Walsall area at the moment, but we are expanding and um, hopefully um, going into you know like Dudley area, Tipton, um, all the different surrounding areas across the whole of the West Midlands. Um, so that is kind of the, the settings that we do offer. We also work with um, the NHS as well. We've just got a big contract with the NHS. So um, <coughs> I'm just going to pass you on to Lee now. So he's going to discuss that a little bit further. Hello, everyone. Um, I'm Lee, the Registered Care Manager for Fairway Home Care. Um, and I just wanted to talk about some opportunities that we have um, within the NHS. Um, so we've been with the NHS tender now for the last four years, and it's just been renewed for another five years. So we work with all the local commissioning groups and NHS trusts, uh, including mental health, learning disability trust as well. So if you're looking to um, work part time around your studying um, evenings or weekends, we have band two opportunities for you to gain some ward experience or uh, community experience as well. Um, and we pay between 10 and 15 pounds an hour um for for those shifts um so if you're really looking to you know get a bit of extra money um to work alongside your courses that is available to you um two other little areas that we are working on as well is complex care in the community so we work closely with ccgs across wolverhampton birmingham and sully hall um and warsaw and they supply um people that want to be looked cared for in their own homes who have complex needs so it's really good to get some practical clinical skills um, such as tracheostomy care, peg feeding, um, catheterization, to learn all those bits, working with the physiotherapists as well and the occupational therapist teams. Um, and we've just won a contract as well, working for a company called Custodian. And what they do, they provide accommodation, we provide the care for people that want to live independently and, and live in their own, their own settings. We work closely with the probation service as well, so people that want to move away from living with families and, and give them that chance and that opportunity to get back into the community. So lots and lots of opportunities that, that might appeal to you. Okay, so like I discussed earlier, we do do the various settings as well. So we do do all the NHS stuff and things like that. However, mainly we do obviously um, supply to, you know, residential homes, nursing homes, support settings and the domiciliary side as well. So therefore, we are looking for healthcare assistants, support workers, community carers. We also supply nurses to... Um, the, all these different sectors, such as mainly the residential and the nursing homes um, that we supply the nurses to. Um, we also do nursery nurse, uh, nurses as well, dental nurses, domestic um, chefs, um, lots of different opportunities that we do all in um, healthcare settings. Um, sorry, let me do my next slide. Um, therefore, we're very flexible and um, we worked around you guys and um, obviously some of you may be studying and things like that therefore um the hours are kind of not set it's what you guys want if you want part-time that's fine if you want full-time that's also fine if you want to do one or two shifts a week around your um studies that's also fine as well um flexible shifts um such as early's lights long days nights weekdays, weekends, it's completely up to you. Um, we're very flexible in that way. Um, you'd obviously be offered all your training um, as well, such as your mandatories and your moving handling, um, free uniform, weekly, weekly pay, um, lots of different um, opportunities for training if you wanted to kind of get into um, certain things within the sector like lee said more clinical skills we also do that we have a skills lab here at our office which is um with a mannequin doll that you can um you know do peg feed um caffeine and things like that um we also have opportunities for people that don't have experience within the care sector and are looking to get into the care sector this is um, a four-week training program that we have. It's called My Care Portfolio. Um, you don't have to have any experience with this. Um, you get signed up and then you complete the four weeks. You come in, do three days um, practical training, um, like I said, with a mannequin, and then you are guaranteed a job interview at the end. 
Um, that's most likely with myself or my colleagues. And then if you are then successful, that's when we give you the job opportunities to either go into the healthcare sector or the support setting or the domiciliary as well. So very flexible opportunities. You don't just have to stick to um, the one sector either. If you wanted to do a bit of residential work, a bit of nursing and support and community at the same time, that's absolutely fine. Some people are kind of set in what they want to do. Um, you know, they just know they want to either work in a nursing home, but if not, you can um, mix and match. Um, I'm just going to go through our, our values, really. Um, we say fairology. Um, so as it's, you know, as you can see on the slide there. So F is for forward thinking. A is acclaimed. I is inspirational. R is resourceful. O is opportunity. L is lifelong learning. O is one of a kind. And G is growth. And U is, this is about you. Flexible to suit around you. Um, and that's it, really. I mean, I don't know if anyone has any questions, um, but that's all we kind of wanted to discuss today. Thank you, Grace, for the presentation. Thank you, Grace, for the presentation. Does anyone have any questions? Anyone have any questions? If it's okay with you, Grace, would you be able to put it's okay with you, Grace? Would you be able to put the chat box? Yeah, I was going to say, if anyone is kind of interested, you know, they've already got some care experience or whatever it may be and are interested in kind of part time work around, alongside their studies, that's absolutely fine. I would, if you're interested, I'll put my email so that you can um, message me and I can kind of get you the application form and get... Um, it sent over to you you can apply or even if you haven't got any experience but you're interested in the program you can also email me as well okay great thank you and with the application form would they do the with same application form yeah, so part of the application form, it's all online. Um, I'll send them an online link and then you just have to attach your CV to it. Um, it doesn't matter whether you've got experience or not experience in the care sector. I'll love to send that from your CV of kind of what path you would have to go down. Okay, and would students need a DBA? Okay, and would students need a DBA? Or would they they don't have to have a DBS. Um, they don't have to have one already because we will get one for them. So if they are successful and start the application process with us, um, we would then send them the DBS link and they would have to um, obviously fill that out and we can get it sent off. Okay, great then, thank you. I don't think there's any other okay, questions. Thank you. I don't think there's any other questions. Okay, lovely, thank you. Thanks for your time, Grace. Thanks for your time, Grace. All right, thank you. Thank you. Um, that was Grace from Fairways. Uh, so thank you for you know her time uh, for today um, to speak into you guys. So uh, if we can please have a quick couple of minutes break. What has happened is we are ahead of schedule. Um, we are pretty ahead of schedule. So the other two employees that were left. So we had Megan that was supposed to join us from DFE. Obviously, her time was slightly later. I have uh, tried to contact her to see if she can join us early, but she hasn't responded back yet and say with Kaya from CGL. In the meantime, whilst we are waiting for them to join in or respond back, I'm going to go through another presentation with you guys. Um, and that's from a company called Cherished. So Hannah was supposed to join us from a charity called Cherished earlier today. You probably saw in the employer breakdown, they were actually supposed to be uh, joining us for 145, but for some strange reason, unfortunately, they couldn't join us and neither did I hear back from them. So what I'm going to do is Hannah actually sent her presentation um, earlier, uh, a couple of weeks ago. And so I just thought I'd go through it with you guys whilst we're waiting. So I hope that's okay. So what whoever's left, obviously, in the, in the public chat, who's heard of Cherished? Who's heard of Cherish before? Maybe worked with them, or probably heard the name. Or uh, come on, guys, in the um, in the public chat, I wanna I wanna start um, seeing seeing some some names in there. Anyone else? I don't wanna start calling out names. Is there anyone else? Heard of Cherish? Maybe. 
or probably worked with them or anything else? Who's it right in the public chat? New name to me? Ah, oh, okay, no problem whatsoever. Anyone else? Okay, I'm just gonna briefly go through the presentation, okay? Um, and obviously any questions, you can always contact Cherry directly. So Cherish, we worked with for quite a while now. They're actually a really key charity partner that we worked with in the past, especially with the education students. Um, and they're actually based within Birmingham. They've been around for many years, uh, from the top of my head, probably five plus years, six plus years. And they support um, especially young people, uh, females especially within the community, yeah? They've got quite a lot of roles um, and opportunities available for you guys to kind of uh, tap into, whether it's work experience, whether it's volunteering or whether it's, you know, anything else. So one of the roles they have or opportunities they have is this one, which is level three mentoring. So um, if you're into the mentoring side of things or want to support the young ladies, um, you know, within the charity, um, you can get involved. So that we want to want to mentoring with those young ladies within the community um you know a chance for you to change you know their life and kind of support them when it comes to confidence um you know or anything else uh at the moment it would be over zoom um it won't be you know face to face until everything's lifted of course you would be supervised expenses would be paid um and you'd get monthly training on it as well okay so that's one opportunity they have available uh, they have mentoring for uh boys eight plus so that's something they got available as well They've got another girl session called the Blossom Girls Group. So this is basically online girls group for primary and secondary age girls. Um, I think they do a lot of after school clubs mainly. So that's, you know, arts and crafts, games, chats, uh, you know, say, you know, to kind of basically talk to them, kind of make them feel more involved, get confidence uh, building, etc. So that's something that they support as well. So that's something, you know, if you're interested in, you want to do after school clubs, then that's for you. They've got um, a lot of social media side of things. If you're interested in that side, you know, helping with the campaigns. Um, again, you can help them through that way. Again, that could be from home, volunteering, it is unpaid. So bear that in mind. So that's something you can support with as well. Um, you've also, they've got admin. So if you're into the administration side of things within the education, you know, kind of charity field, uh, this is a good way for you to, um, you know, start off uh, something with, you know, to kind of start off, you know, when it comes to experience, um, enhancing your CV. So this is something that you can help with, whether it's data entry, you know, whether it's helping with materials, you know, you know, um, anyone who, who would like to join maybe the charity, you know, the after school clubs, kind of registering them, sending out packs, um, et cetera. So this is the, another side that you can help, um, you know, cherish the charity with as well. Okay. They also offer a variety of training, um, whether that's a one-to-one -one development, you know, uh, regarding strength or personality kind of uh, training, they have that. And they have other ones online that they offer as well uh, around confidence building, you know, in, in, in enhancing your skills, um, you know, branding, you know, yourself in terms of, you know, when it comes to CV writing or covering letters, et cetera, that's something that they offer as well. And they can also help you with, you know, finding some sort of work. Um, so they've got that as well. Okay, so anything else that you might like to get involved with, whether it's organizing the events, you know, whether it's promoting Cherished at the university as an ambassador, or, you know, networking or um, anything else, then um, again, you can get involved and let them know. Okay, they do have quite a few placements available. They have taken students in the past. Um, so that's something that you can um, kind of get involved in. Uh, you can email Hannah on the link that's, you know, the email address that's on there um, or, you know, anything else. So you can um, email them directly. But is there any questions that I can probably try and answer? Unfortunately, obviously, I don't work for Cherry, so I wouldn't be able to answer them fully. Um, but if there's, a, a, you know, anything else um, I can help with, more than happy to. Obviously, it's a shame that Hannah could have joined us today. But again, you can check out the website, you know, email of the Hannah or Carly, any questions you may have. You know, if you want to do placements with them a couple of hours a week, do drop them an email or, you know, help them that way. But, yeah, that's mainly from Cherish side of things. Um, but is there anything else you guys would like to ask whilst we're waiting for Megan from Department 
um, for education. She'll be joining us soon. She's a doctor Nima. She says she can join in. So if we, if I can ask you guys, maybe take a couple of minutes break because we're nearly done now. Um, you know, we'd, we're nearly finished with the whole employability fair that we've organised for you guys this afternoon. Hope you're enjoying it so far. Uh, any any comments, feedback so far? You guys would like to put in the public chat. Um, you know how how are you finding it? So one thing each, maybe you guys could put in the public chat for me. Um, you know how you finding it so far, or you know anything else that you might like to um, kind of put in the public chat. Do let us know. I don't want to start calling out names, guys. I don't want to embarrass you guys. So do you know one thing? One thing you'd like about the conference so far, maybe or something. Sabantika, Aisha, Fazana, George, Michaela, Namra, Omera. The one thing so far that you know, maybe you know, you've enjoyed, or you know, some sort of feedback, or anything. It could be anything in the public chat. What's Megan joins us? Okay. Okay, Namra, very useful. Thank you very much. Omera, hearing the presentation from different places, great. Okay, it's like having a guide to where to move forward, etc. Okay, great stuff. Very helpful. It's help okay, good. So it's nice to hear and read, you know, how it's been informative for you guys. Loads of opportunities. Again, obviously, we have worked hard to get these employers, um, you know, for you guys to kind of not only gain, you know, uh, knowledge about the company or anything else, is to more support you guys in terms of your future career as well and give you different ideas from different backgrounds and different sectors yeah um so hence why you know we've arranged uh, various speakers to come in from various companies um you know etc so we have tried our best as much as we can to make it as diverse as possible um you know everything else so i'm glad to read and hear um that you know you guys have enjoyed it so far it's been insightful and it's been very informative um, we are joined by Meg. Thank you so much, Megan. I know we are pretty ahead of schedule today. Didn't imagine it to be this ahead. Uh, normally, I would say it's about 10, 15 minutes. Um, but due to a couple of employers who couldn't make it, unfortunately, today, we, we are pretty much ahead. Um, so, Megan, I have just uploaded your presentation and I will make you presenter in literally a couple of seconds. There you are. Thank you, Megan, so much. I was made you present here. Hi, hello, everybody, and uh, I hope you can all hear me this uh, sunny afternoon in Yorkshire, which always makes a good day of anything, I think, when the sun's shining. Okay, so my name is Meg Thompson, and I work for the early engagement team at Get Into Teaching. So you may have seen the adverts on the television about teaching and the one that we are showing at the minute is um, called Tuesday and it's about a day in the life of a science teacher and um, if you have seen it you will see that uh, the science teacher is not only teaching but he's uh, doing some pastoral support and he's picking up pupils when they're feeling down He's supporting in class when pupils can't um, seem to get on with the work and the chemistry. And uh, it basically shows the different angles of what teaching is about, not just about being in the classroom environment. So a little bit about teaching then that hopefully will inspire you. So this is the team that I work with. 
We're 10 advisors and our team leader is Jane and we uh, work across the country. You may have seen us at university, at grad fairs and pop-up events and we give information and support on developing personal statements, helping you to research providers, answering questions, feedback and generally providing any support where and when we can to um, establish uh, a support mechanism, if you like, for those people wishing to go into teaching, but also those that are looking at it, not maybe, maybe across a range of careers um, that you're looking into at the minute. Uh, and we've got a range of resources that can help you with those too. So that's a little bit about early engagement. So we support first and second year undergraduates, and those that um, are maybe in industry or corporate uh, establishments and looking to make a career change too. So I was asked a little bit about, uh, to give you a little bit about my journey. So all the um, supporters, the advisors are qualified teachers and we've all got a range of experience. So. I was I was in my thirties, so I was a career changer when I decided to teach. Um, I trained as a science teacher, having um, uh, gained a, a degree in microbiology from the University of Sheffield, and then you can see how my teaching career took different paths. I think it's important to stress that teaching is not just about being in the classroom. There are many different roles and many opportunities to work across a range of subjects. So if you look at my career journey, for um, a example, you can see that uh, initially I became a head of science after teaching biology in a, a, a grammar school for five years. Then I went to work in more challenging schools. And... Um, Hello. <laughs> Uh, and then I became a special needs coordinator and worked more on the pastoral side, supporting in schools. I trained in secondary education, but finished as uh, an assistant head teacher in primary school before I came to work for the Department of Education. So I guess what I've put there is teaching equals opportunities. It's not just about being in a classroom teaching children. If you are ambitious, there's a lot of opportunities to work your way through the system uh, and, and the pay is is commiserate with that too okay a little bit about me so okay why why do teaching and why did i do teaching so i'm coming in from my own perspective of why i became a teacher first and foremost i had a passion for science um, so I did a science degree. I absolutely loved science. I think it's a wonderful subject. Um, and I wanted to create opportunities, not just, not just for the academics amongst um, the, the school community, but opportunities for, for all kinds of young people. Because I genuinely believe that opportunities exist for everyone, regardless of background, ability, origin there are opportunities in this world for everyone but i also wanted i knew i would be a teacher so even though i went into corporate industry i knew that i would be a teacher from a really young age and i wanted to help the community so um that that they were my reasons for teaching but it, it, it's, it's it's a great inspirational job it's, it's supporting aspirations developing confidence amongst young people um it's hard work but tell me a graduate profession that isn't um and um i wanted to young people to say i can be better than and, and be inspired inspired by the by the best. So be the best I could be so that I could say to young people, I want to be better than. So if teaching is something that you're thinking about, then do get in touch with us at um, get into teaching. And um, you can if you do a Google search, get into teaching, it will ask you to register. So please do register, regardless of what your ambitions are, because we can help with school experience. We can help with volunteering through things like the De debate mate scheme. 
and also it gives you the opportunity to speak to an advisor and talk about your aspirations, talk about any concerns you might have, talk about your degree and the range of subjects that you can teach, talk about is it primary education, is it secondary education, do I want to work with special educational needs? So um, get into teaching, please do come and join us and come and have a chat. You can see we're looking for, we are a very friendly team, we're down to earth, we're not judgmental and uh, we'd love to hear from you. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, Megan. I really firstly appreciate your time. I also appreciate that you um, came in early, um, obviously ahead of the allocated time that was given to you. So thank you very, very much. Um, we do have one question in the public chat. It's actually um, is regarding: Is this open for EU students? So the, uh, you know, can they register? Obviously, with the whole Brexit and stuff, not not too sure how it's working within your company. Yes, of course you can. Uh, but currently, we we we're working with the Home Office at the minute to try and encourage. Uh, applicants from across Europe we certainly want to encourage them we don't want to lose that as a channel and we welcome um, anyone to come on board um, and find out about teaching regardless of, of, of what your origin might be do come along and uh, register great thank you um, hope that answered your question Sergio um, is this just aimed at a secondary school level or is it primary or I don't know is it or is it other levels as well primarily we support those wishing to teach ages three so that's early years right through the primary stage and up to age 18 that's the secondary phase we don't currently support anyone that wants to teach in further education at age 18 plus but if you want to teach across the 3 to 11 or the 11 to 18 um, age ranges then getting to teaching is the place to come and um, find out more. Okay, great. Um, are you able to put in your details in the public chat maybe? If students had any further questions or anything else, they could contact you directly maybe? Would that be okay with you? Or like a general email where, you know, anyone... Um, I can put in the general email for getting to teaching. Because I'm an advisor, you come okay. through a triage triage service to begin with, and then the advisors get allocated individual candidates because each candidate is we support on a bespoke basis. So we will adapt our support packages according to the needs of each individual. But I'll certainly put the getting to teaching um, web link onto the chat for you so that you can um, access that. Brilliant. Thank you. Thank you very much, Meg, for your time. Uh, that was a very informative session. Um, and the students, of course, um, if you could please thank Megan for her time. And Megan, I'll be in touch with you after after the um, the event. So thank you very much. We're joined with Kaya um, from CGL. I'm just going to, uh, if you give us a couple of minutes, please, just set up her presentation. Uh, and we'll be joined with Kaya in, in, uh, in a couple of minutes. Okay, guys, thank you so much for your support so far. Thank you uh, for staying around if you have been here from the beginning. And thank you for your patience. We are now joined by Kaya. This is our final presentation for today's Employability Fair as part of the Inspiring Careers, uh, Inspiring you know, Your Futures. Um, so, yeah, without further ado, if I could please welcome Kaya. I'm ready to present her now. Uh, are you able to unmute your mic and maybe uh, if you could test the mic and see if it's working? Yes, slightly. Are you able to just start the presentation, then I can let you know. Um, okay. So, right, 
I've got control now, is that right? Yes, yes. I've, I've given you control, so, you, so you're presenter now. Have you got a headset on, Kaya? Have you got a headset on? No, I haven't. That's fine. Are you able to just move slightly back from your mic? Um, maybe we can hear you a bit more clearer. Okay. Is that better? Much better. Is that okay, guys? Can you guys hear Kaya now? Yep, yep, all all good. All good to go, Kaya. Over to you. Okay, cool. All right. Okay, so hi, everyone. Good afternoon. Um, I'll try not to keep you for too long because I'm conscious that you've probably been here for a while. Um, so I've just come today to introduce a independent, the Black Country Independent Volunteers Service. Um, so I'm from a company called Change Grow Live. Change Grow Live is a national charity that operates within England and Wales, providing support, treatment and rehabilitation for those with substance misuse problems, crime and lack of opportunity. Um, so we have a range of service users within CGL, um, including adults and young people at risk of offending or those with substance misuse problems, um, children in the care system, people with homelessness who are living on the street, offenders in prison and those serving community sentences, families and community and victims of domestic abuse. So the Change Grow Live uh, Black Country Telford and Reeking Independent Visitor Service, um, basically we work with children in the care system, so looked after children. <laughs> so here's just a bit about Change Grow Live as a whole, the organization's vision, mission and values. So anyone that comes um, as, as a volunteer or an employee or, um, yeah, anyone that comes under CGL, we always, we always expect these, our, our vision, mission and missions and values to be upheld at all times. And that's something that we go through with on training. And um, so if you did want to become a volunteer for CGL, you'd go through about three days worth of training. And that's where we just go through things, things like this with you. Um, so the independent visitor service, the independent visitor service covers, as I said, children in looked after care. So for many young people living in the foster care system, life can be a bit un unsettling for them. So having someone there just for them can make all the difference. And that's where you come in as a volunteer. So you'd just be there for someone, a young person, for a few hours once a month as a positive role model and in return you gain uh, valuable experience skills and a sense of achievement because as you can imagine they go through um that many care well you, i don't know you may not know but when you when you are a looked after child you can go through that many carers um and you can almost feel like you're being bounced from pillar to post which is where the independent visitor service comes in really because you would then remain as a constant in that child's life up until they're 18 and a half so you're you know there's there's someone that they're able to build a bond with and gain your trust and respect and just really help them with different areas of life and um, so as an org as an organization on a whole last year we helped over um 211,000 people across the uk so we're a very big organization and as i mentioned we have many different sectors that we cover so there's I think probably over this number now, but there's over 3,000 staff and we have over 2,000 volunteers and a lot of our volunteers actually go on to become staff later down the line and a lot of our current staff are volunteers within different areas of the service. So, so yeah, um, you'd be supporting, if you did want to become a volunteer, you'd be supporting children between the ages of 7 and 18 and a half. And this just includes a monthly visit and it does something fun. I mean, it's been a, a bit difficult being in lockdown and <laughs> we've not managed to kind of do much fun over the years, but we do still have volunteers maintaining that connection with their young people. And that can be through video call, um, going out on walks, a telephone call, just remaining that constant person because although we're in lockdown, we still want to keep things the same just as we would for me and you we still want to keep, want to keep things the same for looked after children as well we don't want them to feel like they've just been left in the lurk um yeah 
there is a YouTube video here, but um, rather than me play it, what I'll do is I'll, I'll send the link in the chat. Um, and that's just, it's just a little bit about what our young people say about the service. So feel free to click that and have a look in your own time. So we have a range of independent visitor service locations. So before I've had the question, if my young person moves, what happens? There are a range of locations. So we're the black country. So we cover Telford and Rekin, Warsaw, Samwell and Dudley, and um, there's, and there's another one that's gone out my head. But yeah, we cover the black country areas. Then we also have um, independent visitors in Derby, East Sussex, Gloucestershire, Harrow, Hull, Norfolk, Nottingham, Stoke, Stafford and Stoke. So if it was that you ever moved away and still wanted to remain a volunteer on the project, that's not an issue. We could just gift you to another project. And likewise, if your young person moved to another city, which is a possibility, they'd always still have that, um, they'd still have that access to the service. So they'd still be able to get an independent visitor. It is part of the uh, every looked after child has a care plan so it is part of the care plan that they are entitled to an independent visitor so the referrals that we receive come through from the social worker and they'll put a referral in for an independent visitor and then we'd look to match them with somebody that would be um somebody that can they we feel would be the best match so we wouldn't put you with a young person but it, it has to be the best match for yourself and for the young person so we kind of get your likes and qualities, get the young person's likes and qualities, and then we look to match you that way. So every, it's just so that everyone in, involved is comfortable. So we do have, we do go by the National Independent Visitor Data Report. So with the Independent Visitor Service, some, or lo, some local authorities, and what a local authority is, is that's where the social worker comes from. So the local authorities that we work with are Dudley, um, Samwell, Telford and Reeking, um, and Warsaw. That's where the local authorities is. So they actually contract their IV service out to external organisations like ourselves, rather than providing the in-house in service. So rather than getting in independent, independent visitors in-house, they contract that out to us. However, there are some local authorities that will just keep it in house. There's a bit of there's a bit of confusion when you keep it in house because then it's like, how can we be assured that it's an independent visitor? And we like to put emphasis on the fact that you are an independent visitor, so you're not from the social services, you're not paid to be there, and that's what young people like. They like to know that you know this is somebody that's giving up their time to support me, and it's not somebody that's just doing it because they have to. And that's where um, they're kind of more likely to respond to you because they know that you want to be there. So Change, Grow, Live have the second high, highest number of matches at 370. And what a match is, is just a volunteer matched with a young person. Um, there are five main external providers. So there are five main external providers that do provide this service. So along with ourselves, we have Bernardus, Doe's, Nias, Action for Children and Common Voice. I'm not sure if any of you have heard of them, but they will also have local authorities attached to them. So, for example, I think within the Birmingham area, that's covered by NIA. Yeah. Okay, so as a, again, just as I mentioned, the I, you, as an IV, you'd be a befriender, a volunteer, you, you're not a paid professional. And we do require you to be an adult, um, a reliable person, where it says a statutory role, that's what I meant when just by that every young person is entitled to an independent visitor. So it falls with under the um, Children's Act. So you support the young person on a one-to-one -one basis, which we provide all the training for you to do that. And we support you every step of the way with that. So we don't just train you and then say, well, there's your young person, off you go. We'll train you. We'd come out with you on the match visit so that you both feel comfortable because, again, when we tell you about the young person, we're kind of matching you on paper. So we'd also always make we make sure we come out on that match visit so that you can meet face to face and get a feel for them, but also let us know how you felt about that. 
and um, you can be from any background we we encourage diversity because of course we're working with people from a range of different backgrounds and so we want our organization to be reflective of the people that we work with and of the wider community so yeah and this is just the, a bit about the Children's Act 1989. And as you can see, a person appointed under this section must visit, befriend, and advise the child. So again, it's a statutory role, and we are covered under the Children's Act to provide an independent visitor. So does anyone have any questions about the service? Thank you so much, Kaya, for that. That was very informative. Um, I'm very grateful, so thank you. Um, any questions, guys, for Kaya? You can put in the public chat for us, please. Do check out the link that she sent as well uh, from YouTube. Um, Just right in. No problem. I know you've been in touch with uh, one of my colleagues, Julie, I, 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 um, I believe. How would work experience or, you know, placements if students are looking to get into placements, you know, whether it's a couple of days a week or anything like that, how would that work within um, with CGL? So when I've spoken to Julie before, she did mention that because we are in um, a pandemic, it's a bit difficult for students to get um, placement opportunities at the moment. So the way that we kind of thought it would work with CGL, I explained to her that it is only a monthly thing because because you're volunteers, we understand that you do have a life outside of volunteering. So it is only a monthly role, but Julie said that she was happy to accept it as part of your, is it a portfolio or something? She said she was happy to accept that as part of your portfolio. Um, at the end of every visit, you are required to fill out a contact form. So that's just letting ourselves know how the visit went, um, how the young person felt, those kind of things. So we all we always receive that every month after a visit. So Julie said that she was happy for that to be used as evidence. And we also have regular check-ins with our volunteers. Um, we try and do it every six to eight weeks again because we know you have life and things like that. Um, we call them supervisions, but they're not so serious that we just we just check in to see how you're finding things. If there's anything you need support with, any extra training. So again, with the um, supervisions that we call them. Julie said she'd be happy for that to also be used as evidence, I think, for your portfolio. So although it's not like something you could do weekly or twice a week or anything like that, she was happy to accept that because of the difficulty I think some students are finding with placement, because essentially you are directly working with that child on your own. It's, um, it's, it's not like myself or Peshba, who's the uh, project lead, would come out with you on every visit. So, yeah, but you would get the guidance from ourselves. Um, at CGL, again, I, I didn't mention this, but we do offer training. So if you were to become a volunteer with um, CGL, you would, you, you're almost treated like an employee. So the same level of training that I have access to, you would also have access to. So whether it be safeguarding, um, boundaries, those kind of things, you would also be able to enroll on that training. So. That, I'm not sure if that could add to any anyone's portfolio or something like that, but that could also be used as evidence. Um, and one thing I didn't mention is volunteers are also able to um, claim their expenses back. So if you're wondering how that all works, if you want to go out on a visit, it, it's an, it, we do cover all the expenses in, in terms of that and the training again. Because you're classed as an employee, we wouldn't ask you to pay for the training. So might have been a long-winded answer, Sada, but I hope it ends. No, no, that's fine. Thank you. No, no, that was um, that was a very detailed answer. Um, so would you would you take on students for block weeks then, if they were to do like a block week or a couple of weeks, or is it just that monthly placement that you were mentioning to Julie? It's just the monthly one we was, um, me and Julie were talking about. But we do cover the cost of your DBS, um, which she said is good, and we do one thing i did mention to julie is it's it's a long-term role so we do expect you to support for 18 months minimum they okay. wouldn't just want you to come in and then kind of um not continue with it and she also said that that's something that aligns with um your studies that you have to be committed to to your um work is work, work experience or i can't remember what it's called now but yeah okay no worries that's fine Thank you so much. Uh, was there any further questions? 
anything you would like to ask, um, if you don't want to put in the public chat, you're more than welcome to email Peshwa. So that email address, Kai, is put into the public chat, so you're more than welcome to copy and paste that. Um, yeah. Yeah. So um, if you want to the sorry, I was going to say, if you want an application form or you want more information, just um, email over Peshwa uh, or myself. But it, it's probably email, easier to email Pesh because she'll go through the application forms. And, yeah, any, any, any more information you need, uh, please feel free to also go on the Change, Grow, Live website because uh, all our opportunities are on there. Brilliant. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Kaya, for coming. Uh, sorry to your allocated time, but yeah, thank you. Thank you, and I'll drop you an email after. Um, okay. Thank you very much. Thank you. Bye. 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 Okay, thank you everyone for attending. Um, I hope you've all found the day um, informative and beneficial. So my name is Yasmin and my colleague Sabah has been leading on this event. Um, we are based in Hyde and we are currently working from home. Our roles are employee engagement and alumni officers. So we are the, we organise all the careers fairs and all the employee presentations, the virtual ones, as well as the ones on campus when things do get back to normal. So if you do have any questions or need any support with your employability, you're more than welcome to get in touch and you can get in touch at the Hyde email address, which we'll put in the public chat as well. If you do have any questions regarding anything about Hyde that you may want to ask while we're still here, we're happy to answer them as well just in case, is it is a good opportunity for you to be able to ask us while we are here. Um, and we do hope this, the presentations that have happened today, the recording will be made available. We're not sure how long it will take to be made available, but once it is, you will be sent an email as well for the recording. So thank you for your time and hopefully- Thank you, thank you guys. Thank you for your patience and thank you for staying on. We hope you enjoyed it. And uh, thank you, I guess on behalf of me and Yasmin and have a lovely the rest uh you know the rest of your afternoon thank you thank you yeah.